In this video, we're going to annotate this image, which contains a blazar. It already has an astrometric solution, so if we open Annotate Image, we can annotate the blazar by selecting and adding the quasar catalog. There are several quasars in the image, but they are almost all very weak. Many of them are annotated, but we can't actually see them. The one we're interested in is the one in the center of the image. We can find information about this quasar on the Frankfurt Quasar Monitoring website. Here we have a chart showing the quasar and seven comparison stars with their magnitudes. We can make our own chart and label these comparison stars by adding a custom catalog in Annotate Image. In other words, we can customize the way we annotate our images. The chart doesn't show the coordinates of the comparison stars, and we need those if we want to create our own catalog. One easy way to find those coordinates is by using Dynamic PSF. As the image already has an astrometric solution, if we select the comparison stars, Dynamic PSF will calculate their equatorial coordinates. So, let's find the stars in the chart on the right and mark them on our image. Lastly, we also select the blazar. Now we have the coordinates of all the stars. We can export and save this table in CSV format so that the data is in the spreadsheet format we need for Annotate Image. Annotate Image catalogs are text files with comma-separated columns. The first column is the object identifier. In this case, we've used the same numbering as the chart on the right. The last object is the blazar. Next, we have the coordinates of each object in degrees. We therefore need to convert the dynamic PSF coordinates to degrees. Lastly, the object magnitude, which we can get from the table on the website. We can also define other fields in the catalog, but we don't need those at the moment. However, it's important to leave all the commas for these empty columns. Once we've created and saved the catalog, we can close Dynamic PSF and open Annotate Image. First, we deselect the Miliquas catalog, then we add the Custom catalog. To add the catalog, we need to select the file. We're going to tell Annotate Image to display the name and magnitude too. And we click on OK to annotate the image. As you can see, Annotate Image has annotated the object of interest and the comparison stars with their magnitudes. We could make some improvements. For example, we could use a brighter color for the annotations. Let's try Lime. We can also draw circles on the objects instead of crosses. To do this, we need to include a diameter in the corresponding column of the catalog. The diameter is given in arc minutes. Let's try 15 arc seconds for the circle, in other words, 0.25 arc minutes. We save our changes, 
and annotate the image again. Now we have our own custom annotation. We've marked the objects of interest in the center using the same numbering as the website, and we've also added the magnitudes. Now we're going to annotate this image of the Virgo cluster. We open Annotate Image, and this time we're going to annotate the objects in the Messier, NGC, and IC catalogs. To make the Messier objects more visible, let's change the color, the thickness of the ellipsis outlines, and the font size. We're going to use a width of 5 pixels and a font size of 24. Now the Messier objects stand out more from the small, weak NGC and IC objects. This image contains a little surprise. The field we see here is around 3 degrees wide, and the image was taken with a Canon 400mm focal length f2.8 lens, so we have an aperture of 14 centimeters. We're going to annotate the Miliquas catalog, which contains the active galaxies and quasars. Now that we've annotated this catalog, we can see that the image contains many quasars. We can't really display the name labels because we won't be able to see the image, so let's just show the markers. As you can see, this image includes thousands of small dots. They're not stars, but quasars and extremely distant active galaxies. Almost all of them are just tiny dots. How far away are these galaxies? With this catalog, as well as showing the name labels, we can annotate the redshift of each of these sources. When we annotate the redshift of the objects in this catalog, we encounter a problem. The name of this Messier catalog galaxy hasn't been annotated. Why not? Automatic annotation is a complex programming challenge. In PixInsight, we've solved it by establishing preset positions for the labels. So, why hasn't Annotate Image annotated this galaxy? Because with the font size selected, Annotate Image doesn't have enough space to include the galaxy name as well as all the other annotations. If this happens, the only solution is to make more space for the labels. So, let's change the font size of the Messier object labels back to 16 and make the Miliquas redshift labels smaller with a font size of 6. And let's increase the transparency to make them more discreet. Now that there's more space for the labels, Annotate Image has rearranged them and found enough room for the name of the Messier object. The nicest thing about this image is that, using a telephoto lens, we can see objects that are extremely far away. A redshift value of 3 means that the light we see from this object has been traveling for 12 billion years. There are even objects with higher redshift values, like 3.6 and 3.9. Some are weak with low redshifts, which means that they are small objects. But there are some with much higher redshifts that are actually brighter, like this one, which has a redshift of 2.3. This means that it's a very large object. This one here has a redshift value of 1.3 and is very bright. Thanks to Annotate Image, we have discovered that this image contains thousands of objects located within the confines of the visible universe. Mm -hmm.